and welcome back. Yes, now I wasn't going to do this video quite so soon on the Raspberry Pi Pico and the programmable IOs, but this is the sort of thing you can end up with, um, with a little bit of patience and uh, hard work. Now, if I just um, downgrade the lighting a little bit in there, you'll see it a lot better. There we are now, you, see, you can see the colours. It's very difficult to video colours actually on LEDs. But that gives you a flavour of what it would be like, right? This is um, a Neo Pixel stick, in case um, you're not aware of it. And yeah, it's all running on PIOs on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is like the end culmination of probably a week's work worth of um, research and development. So let's see how we get to here. I want to do a shout out for JLC PCB. No, stop, stop. Don't go away. Look what they're doing. $2 for aluminium circuit boards. This is absolutely incredible. If you've ever wanted to try an aluminium PCB, now's the time to do it. Now, remember, aluminium PCB is a single sided normally with the aluminium on the bottom. Then you have a dielectric layer that uh, transfers the heat up to the top copper layer. Now, aluminium is very, very strong and it will suck the heat away out of your components without the need for extra heat sinks, for example. Go and have a look at their website and check them out. And there's more. JLC PCB now allow you to create your own parts library because there's nothing more disappointing than creating a PCB and then finding you can't get the parts or there's a big long delay. Now you can create your own custom parts library to ensure you get the components you need and of course the associated footprints so you know they're going to fit on the PCB itself. To get to this page that describes everything you ever need to know about creating your parts library simply go to their home page and then click on the link at the top. Very, very simple and a really, really useful feature. Go and check out JLC PCB now. Now, using the programmable IOs came from a comment from my previous video about making sounds with the Raspberry Pi Pico, and they sounded pretty awful. Now, one comment they are, that one there, look, says about the timing being off. Well, you know, does it really matter for a fridge door alarm? Not really, but it got me thinking, hmm, yeah, the... PIOs, programmable IOs, on this particular board, which is a unique feature on embedded controllers like this, could be something to look at, and maybe it could be nice for my fridge alarm too. So, what I've done is look into it, and believe me, it's far, far simpler. No, you there, come back, come back. It's simpler. It's simpler than what you think it is. It really is, even for beginners. When you try and control any of these pins here, using a standard Arduino or Nano or even a Pico, what is it you're actually doing? You're saying to the GPIO pin, we say, turn on, yeah, go high, and then stay high for a bit, and then go low again. Yes, we go high, low. That That's all you can do with the GPIO pin, isn't it? Now, yes, you can do some clever stuff. Some are going high, some are going low, some are in tandem with others, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is programming those GPIOs to go high or low. So guess what the programmable I.O. feature on the Pico does? Yes, it, it programs the GPIOs to go high or low with one big difference. The microcontroller is not involved. Okay, okay. Let's temper that with a little caveat. The microcontroller can still get involved and it can turn the programmable I.O. program on and off. It can put values into the, the, the registers that the program will read and it can read something back out, but it's all very limited. So limited, in fact, that all of the code for the programmable IOs has got to fit into 32 bytes. 32 bytes. And each extraction that we add into the programmable IO code runs in one cycle, exactly. So you can have some very, very precise programming if you want, and indeed you need. For example, if you want to bit bang SPI or I squared C, which I did on an 80 tiny 85 once, if you remember, you can do that using pro programmable IOs on the Pico much, much easier. Was that English? Much, much more easily. Because that's basically what it's designed for, yes? And uh, it could, it's quite sophisticated given that it's only got eight commands. So let's whiz straight in and run a program and you'll see the code in a minute. I'm just going to download something. You see what happens on that board. Oh, look, we have a blinking LED. Stop, come back, come back. 
we're going to go far beyond a blinking LED. We're going to build on this because remember, my thought processes were originally for sound. Now this is about as slow as I could get this blinking LED. You can just about see it's blinking, yes? Now this little oscilloscope, handheld oscilloscope from JYE Tech, I bought this as a kit from Banggood many years ago. And it's great for audio frequency stuff, up to about 50k at a push. But uh, we're running, as you can see at the bottom there, let me get my little pointer, we're running at 4.886 hertz. And as you can see, it's quite a nice little square wave, even if it is marching across the screen a little bit. But square wave it is. Yeah. Now, my thought process at this point was to say, OK, if we can blink that LED like that, surely we can blink it so fast that you can't tell it's blinking, but you will be able to hear a buzzing sound from a pizza electric uh, buzzer or a speaker. Let's speed this up then and make it go faster and see what we can hear. Right, new code is ready to upload. The LED is off at the moment, so the blink program is stopped. We're going to speed it up and then we're going to look at the code. Right, off it goes. Now you saw it flash a little bit, but that's about it. I mean, you can't really tell that's doing much. It's flashing purely coincidentally because of what I'm doing in the code. I'm basically beeping a sound that we can't actually hear yet. So let's remove that LED, put a speaker or something in its place and see what uh, we can hear. And just to have a quick look at the scope again, you can see here there are pulses of square waves and the frequency now it says up there is 800, 855 hertz. So that should be plenty audible. So yeah, let's stick a speaker on here. Okay, you can hear that beeping, yeah? Um, now I've got either a speaker or a little pizza electric thing here, which is the one currently plugged in. Plenty loud enough for the demo. However, it's not quite as loud as we really want it to be. But let's go th through the code first because it's very, very simple. OK, a quick whirlwind tour of then of the uh, language that we need to program the PIOs in. And it's very simple. You've only got eight commands. So there's not a huge amount you can do, although you can, of course, make it quite sophisticated. Right, let's just whiz through this then. The first three lines are all the import stuff that we covered last time, right? Just so that we know what we're doing. This is the same as the uh, include libraries as part of the Arduino statement. It's fine. Uh, but this bit here that I've highlighted, that is the the language, the assembler language that we're going to talk to the programmable IOs in. So the first thing we need to say is, Thony, by the way, we're not writing in MicroPython at the minute. We're writing in assembler for the PIO. And uh, by the way, I'd like you to set the pin that we're using initially high. Now you might be saying, well, which pin? What pin? Where does that come from? Hang on. That will come at runtime, Yeah, a little bit further down. We'll come on to that in a minute. So this assembler program that's following set the initial pin high. Great, OK. Uh, we'll skip this bit. Right, we're coming straight to here. That is saying, of the pins that I've supplied now, set the first one to 1, which is the same as high, which, yes, admittedly, we did do there. Yes, but we're setting it high. Uh, the next bit here is saying setting it low. So high, low, high, low, high, low. Yeah, great. What's this bit in brackets? Well, that's additional weight states that you can have. Yeah, wasted cycles. So we're going in one cycle, I want you to set the pin high. Yeah, so LED, if you like, on or the beep sound high. And then wait for five more cycles, clock cycles this is, and then set it low and wait another five clock cycles. Now I'm waiting five clock cycles in both instances because I want my square wave to be nice and symmetrical, yeah? Mark space ratio the same. Now the wrap and the wrap target saves us a whole clock cycle because what would you do if we were running these commands here first? When it hits the bottom of those commands, what's it supposed to do? It would just stop, wouldn't it? We'd have to say jump back to the beginning, but that wastes a clock cycle doing that. By having a wrap target, which is the beginning of the code at the top, and wrap at the bottom, it basically resets the program counter and makes it go back up to that point. Yeah, so it just it doesn't jump, but it's like a jump back to the beginning, and it doesn't take any clock cycles whatsoever. So there we are. Good, we've saved some. So we can say this is taking one clock cycle for that, and five. So that's six. Six clock cycles on six clock cycles off. Great. Okay. Well, that's it. That, that's all the program 
that was, uh, we need to turn that pin on and off a certain number of times. What's that? How many times? Okay, well, that's coming up. Right, back into MicroPython world now. We're saying, right, SM, state machine, you can call it fish and chips, but let's be meaningful. State machine, we're saying Raspberry Pi to uh, state machine, zero, because you can have between zero and seven. There are eight state machines available for you. But remember, they're all limited to this 32-byte maximum amount of code you can have. So you'd be pretty hard pushed, wouldn't you, to use all eight. Blink is the program we're going to use. There it is, look, defined there, and we're saying that's the one I want you to run. What clock frequency do we want all this to run at? Well, this is where you can do a little bit of maths and go, well, if I run it at 10 kilohertz and I'm having six clock cycles positive uh, pin output and then six clock cycles negative, you work that out and it comes up to 830-odd hertz, yeah? And... Here, my base pin, where the output's going to come on here, they always say pins, the first one we're mentioning here is pin 15, yeah? And this is the one we're referring to also up here. The initial pin state is going to be high. So that's what that one refers to. So that's it. So we're going, that's the code we're running. That's my state machine sort of setup, really. And then we're saying forever, do loop forever, look, while forever. Make that state machine active, so basically run it. Wait for 500 milliseconds with this sleep time. Then shut down that program again for another 200 milliseconds, and then just keep going around this loop. Hence the beep, beep, beep nature of it. Yeah? So the, the act, this program is not running with the help of the microcontroller. This is independent in that tiny, tiny, tiny little little controller brain of the PIOs. And it's, as I say, it's only got seven or eight commands, so there's not a huge amount that it can do, but it can be still quite sophisticated. Let's be quite clear on that. So that's it. That is a simple PIO program. And if you download this onto your Pico and just play around with the weight states here and the frequency here, you'll see very quickly the difference in in uh, frequency and mark space ratio that you'll have on that output tone. Now, let's just stop right there because, yeah, okay, we can make a tone, but we made a tone last week and we're just not that bothered, are we, really about the sort of the beautiful nature of that square wave or not, although it's better if it sounds nicer. In the Arduino world, by using a tone library, we use two pins and one of them is not ground, not, not really. What we say in the Arduino world is one pin is high while the other pin is low and then they flip flop. So what was high becomes low and what was low becomes high. Why does that increase the volume? And you've got to think how a speaker works. So here's my speaker or sounder, whatever, but it's easier to imagine with this. The cone of the speaker, when you get a positive input on that pin there, the orange one, forces the cone forward. Yeah, imagine, you know, I'm sure you've been to rock concerts or raves or whatever, and you know that when you get a drum beat, this cone can leap forward quite a bit and then go back to its normal resting state. But if we had these leads here connected in reverse, what would happen is instead of it leaping forward, it would actually try and be sucked back in to the back of the speaker. And it, and it will be sucked back in. So by alternating the output on these leads, both positive and then the other one positive and this one negative, this cone will leap forward, go back to the resting state, but beyond the resting state and be sucked back in. So you get twice the movement for the same electrical pulses. And that's why it will sound louder if we can do that. And it is, in fact, what we've done on the Arduino. How do we do it on here then? How can I get this beeper to run on two pins and having this flip-flop arrangement with the simple PIO programming we're doing. It's child's play, child's play, I tell you. Just keep tuned in, keep tuned in and watch this. Right, there's a different program running on this now that you can hear beeping. Whether you'll hear the difference in volume from that speaker, I don't know. This is now running as it was previously, but if I move this pin here, instead of it running to the ground, it's gonna to run to another pin. Let's see what that does. Now, 
I can immediately hear a much increased volume. Whether my microphone picked that up enough and whether you'd see it even is, is difficult to know at this stage. And unfortunately, the scope here won't pick up the difference between the two pulses. So let me um, flip over to the main scope and I'll show you exactly what's coming out of those pins. And then we'll have a brief look at the code. So what we can see here then on the scope is that uh, one output is uh, going positive while the other one's going negative and vice versa. As this one drops, this one comes up and is positive. And that gives us effectively, if this, if this gap here between the top and the bottom of the, of the pulse is about, in this case, 3.3 volts of that instance, I guess it's a 3.3 volt device, isn't it? You're going to get something like 6 to 6.5 volts total output and the volume is most definitely noticeably higher uh, when connected across those two outputs. Um, if I connect it across though it does deform that waveform quite a bit obviously the interaction between the coils or the piezoelectric thing but uh, nevertheless the sound is louder which is what I'm after. So great so that means we're another step further forward to using the Pico as part of my Raspberry Pi Pico fridge door alarm system um, rather than another Arduino which of course I'm familiar with and would tend to lean towards that way but slowly we're getting there we're learning. Now in this particular instance because you're seeing that waveform constantly out I've actually changed the code a little bit so I've just commented out the uh, the lines down the bottom that uh, pulse it and it's just active in fact I don't really need that while in there it's just doing nothing. Now back to the code, there's a couple of things we, we skimmed over or just totally ignored because I didn't want to put you off or anything. But in this particular code here now, there's a couple of things we need to look at. As well as setting the pin high, in the same clock cycle you can set another pin low with the dot side command. So main pin goes up and this other pin with the dot side, side set pin effectively goes low and then we wait for the 15 cycles again and also on the next line then we set the main pin low and the side pin high. What's this side pin bit? Well if you look at the uh, declaration now for the state machine as well as our set base pin of 15 we have a side set pin set to 13 and you can have any two pins mentioned in here uh, and they'll work and Similarly, when we in the decorator for the actual program, we're saying the side set initial state is going to be high, but the initial state for the main pin is going to be low. Now, it doesn't really matter quite honestly what you put in there because the program is going to run so fast it will set itself correctly by the virtue of this very first line, won't it? But that's just so you know how all these things here connect up to these things here. Okay, so. I would say download this as well if you're that interested and just play about a little bit. Remember that the frequency can only go down to 2000. Any lower than that you'll get an error saying frequency too low. And if you try and increase these weight states to something like 31 you'll get an error saying wait too long because we can only set these weights now down to 15. The reason I've put down here says look the maximum delay cycles is now just four bits the maximum value you can put into four bits because we're we're using some pro programming commands here that uh, the interpreter has to work out various things about them about whether the weight states are optional or not and it uses up some of these bits in that word let's not get too involved with that just be aware of that's why it's happening i'm going to link you to a couple of websites which i think are very useful now this uh, website by, who's it by, uh, Wolfgang Spahn, Der Null Effect, The Null Effect, this is called, but this particular article about the IOs um, is very clear and it lists out all the ways you need to instantiate that state machine and all the commands you can have and everything that it can do. The one question that this answered for me that none of the others did is why the weight states drops from the maximum of 31 down to 15 and then 7 depending on what code you've got in there. And it's all down to how many bits of a word you can use for the delays. It's all in here um, and I recommend 
playing about basically with this a little bit. Now there is also a video that um, I need to show you. So this is the uh, video website on YouTube. It's Life with David. Um, and he goes through some of this PIO stuff very, very slowly and very, very well. Um, he answered a couple of questions that I had in my mind. So he talks about talking uh, to another microcontroller, basically a 6502, but that's sort of almost irrelevant, really. The stuff he does here is very good. So this is David starting his uh, videos. Bear with him. I think it's worth a visit, though, because if you're into the beginning of the PIOs, his, his slow approach and methodical approach really does uh, make things clear. Cool. Okay. I'm very happy that my uh, Pico is outputting that square wave that you can still see on the oscilloscope there without any involvement from the actual microcontroller itself. It set the things running and then just walked away from it thinking, OK, give me something to do. So that's a big plus. And you just turn those tones on and off with that SM.active 1 or 0. So that's another step in my understanding of the Pico, and I hope yours too. Remember, if you've got any questions or perhaps suggestions how we could have done it differently, um, I know some of you, well, everybody has got a different way of doing things, haven't they? Yeah, so I'm sure there'll be some suggestions of how we could have done this differently. And um, yeah, comments below. Don't remember to give it a thumbs up and a like. Subscribe. Don't forget to tick the old notification bell. Apparently YouTube is saying nobody's ticking the bell anymore on YouTube. You've got to remember to do both things. Subscribe and tick the bell or you won't be informed of new videos. I don't know. It's all beyond me. Okay. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for everything else. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.